Welcome. I'm so glad we're able to worship together today. We are continuing our sermon series on Simon Peter, a faithful but flawed disciple. Today we're going to go into the courtyard where Peter denied Christ three times. And we're going to hear the story from another's point of view. Settle ourselves, place ourselves in that story. So I implore you to turn your mind away from what is around us and from what we normally experience so that we can place ourselves in the same spot that Peter was. As we prepare to do that and to worship God, let us calm our hearts and our minds. Let us pray. Holy and mighty God, so many times we deny you, whether in how we behave, in what we say, in what we do, in how we treat others, we go against your teaching. We fall short of the things that we strive to do in your name. Lord, as we face these things, we come to you and ask for your forgiveness, trusting in your grace. Lord God, we lift up our sins to you. Help us to feel your assurance of your grace, of your love, of your forgiveness, because God, we know that you give those things in abundance. Thank you. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Matthew, chapter 26, verses 69 through 75. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A female servant came up to him and said, you also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another female servant saw him and said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At the moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My name is Hanina, and I'm a servant of a family here in Jerusalem. I just experienced the strangest night. I'm still not really sure what I witnessed. You see, during the dark of night, my master came to me and told me to get up and, and go with him to the courtyard in the center of town. When we got there, I was struck by the pillars that were so tall and the flicker of the reflection of the fire in those tall pillars looming over me. And my master went in where the important people went. And the unimportant people and the servants, we gathered around a fire because we were cold. It was a chilly night. And as we sat there around the fire, the buzz came out that the person on trial was this man named Jesus. Some of us remembered him because just the week before, 
had come into Jerusalem and people were shouting Hosanna and treating him like a king even though he was riding in as a donkey. So we wondered what had happened between that day and today. What had Jesus done to go from an exalted one to one on trial in the middle of the night? As we talked, a man came and stood at a distance. It seemed like I recognized him, so I went up to him and I said, aren't you one of Jesus' followers? Weren't you with him? And he shook his head and vehemently denied that he was one of Jesus' followers. As I stood there confused because I was sure that was him, he was in tattered clothes, dressed like a traveler. And then another woman came up to him and said, I know you were there with him. I saw you. And again, he shook his head, put his hands up and said, I didn't know Jesus. I don't know who this man is. And then finally, a whole group of us came and we pointed at him and we said, you are one of those Galileans following Jesus, the Nazarene. We can hear it in your accent. And then I stood there and watched him and his face went from denial to fear and sadness. It was such a strange change from anger to almost mournful. And the man quickly left. Now I shouldn't have, but I did. I was so interested and fascinated by what I saw in his face that I followed him. And I stood at a, at a distance as I saw him there, bent over, hunched over, crying racked with the sobs that came out of him. It was almost as if he was mourning, but there was no body there to mourn. I didn't know what to think. I've never seen a man behave like this, to be in pain like this. What caused it? What happened? I'm not really sure. I can only assume that he did actually know Jesus. And that he was upset with himself for denying it. He denied it three times. And then after the cock crowed, he ran and cried. He must have felt remorse. Now, I can't really blame him because I, too, have denied my friends for fear that I might be rejected. I, too, have lied about my servant friends or about the fact that I myself am a servant because I was afraid of the way people would see me. I, too, have done terrible things and felt horrible by what I had done or said. So I cannot judge this man. I wonder if we are all that way. Have we all done something that causes us pain? That when faced with that truth, we are mournful and sorrowful? I know that man felt it, and I know I have felt it. Have you felt it too? You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice and the same old lies. If you've been trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a savior, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains.
for the light of day and the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. And there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.